Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, as our custom is, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. I receive it right now. Amen. Praise God. Believe in God to do a miracle in your life today. As a child of God, miracles should be normal. Favor should be normal. See, very important for you to understand that. Praise God. So, you know, we've been talking about um, the, the wisdom of God's word. And yeah, um, this week we began to look at ordinances or traditions that God began to lay for the children of Israel. Now, the purpose of this teaching is to get you to see that every word that proceeds out of God's mouth carries wisdom in it. And not one word, just like Jesus said, till heaven and earth pass, not one word, not one jot or tittle of the law will go without being fulfilled. Now, fulfilled or to be fulfilled or fulfillment is not the same thing as erased. Fulfillment means to show the reason for. See? To show the reason for. So when someone says, Oh, my thirst has been fulfilled. You see, that person was thirsty and the person needed water. And when the person was given cold water or whatever water, depends on your choice. And you drink it and say, ah, this water have just fulfilled. Um, it's a, you usually you say quench your thirst. But you understand what I'm talking about? Fulfill. The water has just shown its purpose for my body. The water have shown its purpose for my body. See? Now, Every command God gave, he gave it in prophecy. So when God says, thou shalt not steal, and Jesus comes now and begins, began, began to teach us, take no thought for your life because your heavenly father knows you everything you need and he provides it for you. So the moment you now connect with God and begin to receive provision from God, then you will understand why God says thou shall not steal. When you come to that understanding, then that command has been fulfilled in you. Many times we interpret fulfill as done away with. No, it's not the same thing. Oh, Christ has fulfilled the law. So you don't need to keep the law again. Now you're wrong. You're wrong. Christ has fulfilled the law simply means Christ has shown the purpose of the law. How? How did he do that? Now the Bible says, he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. So you couldn't use the law to trap Jesus. Remember, Paul spoke, I think Paul was talking to Timothy, and he says, the law was given for wicked and, un un and disobedient people. Okay? Now, the one who fulfills the law is the one who shows the wisdom of the law. Every command that God gave, the one who shows the wisdom of it. How do you show the wisdom? By fulfilling it. How did Jesus fulfill the law? He showed that it is possible to live without sin. And he didn't show it in such a manner that only divine people can do it. He shows it in such a manner because he was a man. He was a man. Now, Jesus was a man. And then also he was God. Now, let me explain something to you. He was a man that lived his life by the spirit of God. Okay. And it's the same thing we were, the same opportunity we have been given. And then now here is how we fulfill the law. 
we are not expected to fulfill the law by our own strength. That's why Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, to be born again simply means to have the Holy Spirit live in you. To be born again is not, is not just to go for altar call. To be born again means submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit lives in you. Now the Holy Spirit controls your life. So you now begin to learn how to depend on the Holy Spirit for everything. It is in so doing, you will begin to live a life that fulfills every law. So, it, it, and you know, that's the reason a lot of people have challenges with these things. You know, they say, oh, the law is too hard. Nobody can keep it. That's a big lie. Big lie. That the, God will not give you what is impossible. See? He will not give you what is impossible. And that's one of the reasons Jesus came to dwell among us. Because you see, mm, listen to me now. And I've said this before on this broadcast. Originally, when God created the world, that's before man was created. Now, this is before the world began or before the foundation of the world, okay? Now, before Adam was created, already, according to God's plan, Jesus was created. Not as Jesus was to. Now, I think I explained this to you. Okay, I think it was in a service. I was, I was teaching that. I don't know if I shared it this way on this broadcast. Now, understand this, that Jesus was... Jesus was the Word of God. And when you say Jesus was the Word of God, He wasn't... If you go to heaven, for example, you know, it's not like you would see a man called Jesus and say, that's Jesus. This is Jesus. Even today, <laughs> praise God, even today, if you go to heaven, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm sorry to bust your bubble. You won't see one walking around and say, oh, that's Jesus. And say, hey, you know, some stories people have told us that, you know, they went to heaven and they saw Jesus and Jesus took them, you know. Now, Jesus is the word of God. I need you to catch this. Jesus is the word of God. Now, so before creation, it has been determined that Jesus will come. Yet, now what I'm saying to you, you see, um, I was telling you last week about a Bible teacher and a word teacher, okay? What a word teacher will do to you, he will drive you to go study your Bible again. That's what a word teacher will do because he'll be bringing forth you that have studied the Bible before you begin to wonder. I thought I read those scriptures before. Let me go back and check it again. Yes. So now listen to me, because this is, this is very important. Before Adam was created, God has already planned for Jesus to come. Now, you want to think, okay, so invariably you're saying, God had known or planned for Adam to sin and Jesus will come and rescue him. Now that's where we get it wrong. The plan for Jesus coming from the very beginning before the world began, before the creation of Adam, was not to come and rescue man from sin. No, that was an added assignment that he was given. Now I want you to listen to me. I pray the Lord give you understanding to this. Now, Jesus was the word of God made flesh. Right? Now, it means he existed in heaven, not as a man, but he is the word of God. Okay. And then, just like you've had before in scriptures in the Old Testament, now where we call the Old Testament, or let me say in history, okay? You had a man like Melchizedek appear to Abraham. Now, Melchizedek, I know there's this argument, Melchizedek was an earthly king. No, 
That's not true. Praise <laughs> God. That's not true. Now, I know where they got that um, mentality from. They got it. I think they got that from the book of Jesha. And that's where that thought came from, you know, the book of Jesha or other books like that. Now, he said, now this is the problem. When you study, you don't study carefully. Even those that study the Bible, you don't study carefully. And sometimes when you study, it takes the Holy Spirit to make you understand the mind of the writer. Now, that's one thing the Holy Spirit can do for you. So where Melchizedek was described as the king, an earthly king, because this Abraham gave, that's in the book of Joshua now, Abraham gave tithe to this man. Now you would understand that even the writer found it difficult to describe that man. But then he just said, he, he introduced himself as the king of Salem. Okay? Now, later on we find out in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, he tells us that this man, they found out, has no genealogy. See? So there was a bit of confusion, at least speaking now, who this man was. Okay, it's assumed that he was a king, an earthly king of a, 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 a city named um, Salem. And some people say it's old Jerusalem. <laughs> Praise God. Now then, but then, later on, the research is, was done and history in history, and they found out that every king, you can trace their genealogy. See, you can say, okay, this, this king started this kingdom, and then he gave back to his son, his son took over. So, here's the question now. This king that represented himself as the king of Salem, we, they can't tell what happened to him after he met with Abraham. There is no story. Number, that's number one. Number two, there was no city existing as Salem that continued. Then this man, they could not trace his history. So what's going on here? A man just showed up. Abraham had interaction with him and nobody can trace where the man is again. You see? But then they said the man was a king. Now, when you don't have revelation, it becomes a confusing, a confusing story to you. Let me give you an example. There's a preacher called Jerry Savell, okay? He was traveling very late in the night. I think early hours of the morning, between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. or thereabouts. He was traveling between two cities. And according to his, his story, I heard him share this himself. He said he ran over something he didn't know. But it was really bad because, you know, when you're driving and you run over something very, I mean, and whatever he ran over, punctured his fuel tank so while he was driving suddenly he saw his fuel gauge dropping i was remember i was driving between two cities he saw his fuel gauge dropping and so not knowing what to do of course he drove until the car came to a halt and sitting down there with his wife and two little daughters in the car he was wondering what do we do now this is dead in the night. <laughs> and so he began to pray in the spirit. He began to pray in tongues and asking God for help. Now suddenly, someone came and guy brought a truck. And when he came down, he just, you know, when he saw the light of the car, you know, he just thought, oh, let me flag down this car. And trying to flag down the car, the car just actually came by his side and, and stopped. And the next thing the guy came down from me and said, I have been sent here to help you. And I sent here to help me, you know, by who? You know, and then he didn't answer. I just told him, okay, that, um, what's the problem? So he, he analyzed everything and said, okay, no problem. He brought out um, a 
towing instrument, a, a tug, a rope from his truck. He came with a truck, brought it out, tied his car to his own truck and told him, look, we're going to drive some distance and turn over into a gas station and then we're going to walk on your car. Oh, praise God. And so he was just following this man, towing his vehicle. And then he got to this place, drove into a filling station and the man brought out keys from his pocket, you know, turned on the lights, opened the garage of the station. They both rolled Jerry Savelle's car into the garage se section of the gas station. And this man did some work on his car, patched his tank with equipment, patched his tank, and then rolled it back to the uh, pump where they pump in the gas and filled his tank, finished it, told him, all right, you can go. And he was so grateful. He said, how much do I owe? You know, you don't owe me nothing. Just go. Ah, uh -uh. You did all this work without pay. He said, no, don't worry. Just go. And he left, praising God and thanking God. Now, if that story had ended like that, guess what he would be saying the owner of that station is a good man right so someone who hears that story to that point will say wow god just bailed you out by sending the owner of that station around you at that time now but the story didn't end there he said a few weeks later he was going back to that city to preach again. Now, this was in the daytime. And while he was driving, he said, oh, good opportunity. I'm going to stop by to thank this station manager. And then he drove and he could remember the place because though it was in the night, he, he knew how many kilometers or about how many kilometers. So as he was approaching the place, and then there was, there was a, a cafe around just beside the gas station, which he saw the name. It was... At that time of the night, it was still lively. People were there. So he came around that place and he recognized the gas station. And then he stopped and went in. But it was looking dead. It was looking abandoned. So I was wondering, ah, what happened to these people? Into that cafe and said, hey, sorry. I'm looking for the owner of this place. Any news about them? And I said, no. No news about them. He said, no, sorry. A few weeks ago, I had this problem and the, and the manager or the owner helped me. I just wanted to say thank you if you have their phone number. And I said, no, I don't think that's possible. I said, what do you mean that's possible? No, that's not possible. Why? Because they said, we've been here for two years and that station has never worked one day. So what are you talking about? He said, no, we don't even think they can. It's not possible that there will be gas in the tanks of that station that that station has been abandoned for years now that's when jezebel thought to himself like okay what exactly happened now that's when the lord spoke to him and said but i told you that you will receive angels unawares now you see it was the lord that told him that the experience he had was an angel so an angel became flesh. He had keys that could walk on that gas station and needed to understand how heaven operates. While all this operation was going on, he never felt anything. He never felt goosebumps. He never felt like floating in the air. He was normal interacting with a human being walking. And then afterwards, he realized, <laughs> you, you just had an experience with an angel a few weeks ago. Now you see, that's how the kingdom of God operates. Now, if you don't know, now I've had ex similar experience. Okay. If you don't understand this, you will not understand certain things about the kingdom. And so you'll be arguing and arguing and arguing. So I said all that to say this. Melchizedek was the manifestation of the word of God. So Melchizedek was actually the word of God made flesh. See, he showed up to meet with Abraham, had a dealing with Abraham, taught Abraham some things, including tithing, and then he left. 
And that was the last he was seen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, our time is up. <laughs> praise God. And that's what I've just been contemplating. Our time is up. But you see, I'm going to continue from here tomorrow because what I'm sharing with you is important. Every detail, I try to bring these details so that you will, you, your mind will be completely inundated with this truth. Praise God. I pray that the Lord bless you today. I pray that the Lord keep you. I pray the Lord cause his face to shine on you today. Receive miracles from him today. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.